got the social medias, we got the social medias. You got the Facebooks, we got the Facebooks. You got the Twitters, we got the Tweeters. We got the uh, Instagrams, we don't really use that one too much, but you know, we're on there too. If there's something else, we probably got it. You can find them all in the description at the bottom. Hi, and welcome to Heat Wave. I'm Brian Belcher, and I'm joined with Jerris Mitchell. At the hip. Brittany Saturn. Hey. And Chris, it's the Hutch Hutcherson. At the shoulder. Mm. And uh, uh, it's like a Voltron. Brittany, which part of the Voltron would you be? <sighs> the left nut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you so think like curl up? So the, the left, the left nut is usually the higher one. So the right nut is usually the lower one. It's the useful one. I Are believe. you trying to tell me I'm not useful? Yes. Okay, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> but just, uh, oh yeah. Just stores semen. <laughs> you just store semen, Brittany. Do you know that pee is stored in the balls? <laughs> I used to think that for so fucking long. <laughs> Bodies are dumb. For so fucking long? When did you find well, that hey, out? Not much? that just fucking now. long. I just, now. <laughs> just now. You mean, just now. You mean it's today not? Today I like, learned. <gasps> what? <laughs> huh. Yes, that is a thing that I, as an adult human male with uh, testicles, <laughs> have known this whole time. I feel. I feel like... Uh, we if we were ever to get monetized, we just got demonetized. Yeah. So I, it was really weird as a kid. Like I knew that male animals had balls, but I didn't know that human males had yeah. like testicles. Yeah, I what? don't know what I thought. I thought that it was just just like, a farm just was a, different. Just a penis. You thought they were like it. Ken dolls. I was like, or some surely shit? human males don't have balls that hang down. That's weird. So <laughs> what was what was your first interaction with balls? Were you just like, what the fuck <laughs> is that? Um, I think like when I was in the fourth grade, my mom gave me like she cheaped out on the sex talk and she <laughs> sent me down. She just gave me this like weird book that looked like it was illustrated from the seventies, <laughs> and it had all these like creepy little drawings in it. And that's when I like realized like, oh yeah, this is a drawing of like a male body. And I realized that males had testicles. Hmm. And I was like, huh, that makes sense. Cause like I don't know, I knew animals did because I'd seen it. I grew up on a farm, but yeah. like I don't know, I didn't think that humans had testicles. Uh, that's fair. I mean, our good friend, uh, I'm just going to put Joseph Miller on the spot. Uh, <laughs> Master Joe uh, once thought that all white people uh, pooped white poop. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine because he's, uh, he's a black man and he had uh, brown poop. Or he's a brown man and he had brown poop. So he thought the skin color matched uh, the, uh, the poop. Yeah. Poop. yeah. And I was like, hmm. that's fair. That was my favorite Christmas story he told. <laughs> it was a Christmas story. He told us at a Christmas party. But... And when we tried to watch Die Hard but couldn't. <laughs> that was a great Christmas, actually. That was, yeah, it was. We ended up watching Christmas Claymation, playing board games, and finding out that white people have brown poop. Mm. Yeah. That's a wild intro. We're off to a great start. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, well, you know, let's move on. Uh, Jairus, what are we talking about today? So I've been thinking a lot about... Uh, kind of the weird arms race that's going on in uh, cloud gaming. Okay. Um, so there, there are a couple of different things that are going on. There are uh, companies that you can now buy time on like a virtualized instance. So like a Shadow is a company oh. where you pay $35 a month to get access to a really powerful computer. Is this the same people that just did the like Iowa election no 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 no. it's uh shadow <laughs> te- uh... Uh, <laughs> sorry i just i don't think it there is there was a company who uh fronted the was it like the counting process yeah well that, they well, built that, the app we're kind of like time stamping this recording process but yeah. uh this episode's going out later but in real life like the iowa caucus just happened and fuck that's what we're talking about now i need to figure out Sorry, the relationship just, between these companies because mm-hmm. like Shadow, uh, a Shadow Inc. company was in charge of all the tech behind the app that was the Iowa caucus. So I think I know we're completely segueing right now. Really, no, bad no, no. Now I'm now I'm in a thing. So I only Shadow Tech is Shadow Tech is their website. Okay, but uh, maybe it's a different company. Maybe. I, I don't know if it is, though. It, um, it's a company called Shadow. That's all I know. Yeah. Yeah. What I do know about cloud-based gaming, though, is right now the Google Stadia just came out. Right. And Google... So, like, the the different ways that it's it's kind of working now is that some companies are renting out other people's computers so that okay. you can play whatever game you want. <clears throat> um, Google Stadia is doing that, but with proprietary hardware. Um, 
also Steam Link yeah. is now a thing that exists. So wait a minute, Steam Link is, used to be hardware that you had to link to your other hardware. So now apparently there's a mobile app where okay. you can play a game that is downloaded on your personal PC as long as your personal <clears throat> PC is okay. so connected lot- to the internet and on. So okay. it's essentially the same thing. It's a connection over the internet to another computer. Okay. That is it's handling all of the game. You own. Play. Yeah, so your computer is right. more control. So part of part of the thing, like this is a weird fucking time. Well, Xbox and PlayStation 4 are also working together to build their cloud based uh gaming platform. Right. Which is weird. Yeah. I don't know much about it right now. So, yeah. Um yeah, because Sony Authority has PlayStation now with the Gaikai acquisition that they got, uh-huh. but um, supposedly, I guess for whatever their next iteration of it, or maybe just for future like capacity, they're using Microsoft Edge. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, so I didn't Gek- realize they were using Azure. That's kind of funny. Yeah, was Gek- uh, Gek- Gekai? I always get that one weird. Is that the same company that was on Live at one point? Uh, that was, no, like, the first cloud-based <clears throat> gaming platform. <clears throat> Yeah, that that was a separate. You mean Xbox Live? No, on no. Live. On, on Live was on live, yeah. another gaming console that was completely cloud based. Okay. okay, and it was like, it's like eight years old now. Yeah, and it was not. We weren't ready for it. <laughs> yeah, so 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 that service had some like Tomb Raider games and like some like basic PC games at the time, but it also had um, <coughs> Mist Online. Weird. And it was okay. the only way you could play that game through that. Huh. Uh, okay. No, I'm. I'm uh, there's so many cloud companies, and I like. <clears throat> I legitimately like the idea of cloud-based gaming. Right. I don't think we're there yet. I think we're really close. I I think it depends on the service. So well, that's the thing. So 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 let me. So so last night I tried GeForce Now. That launched. Like, what is GeForce Now? GeForce Now is a um. So it's kind of so, okay. So it's basically like renting um a computer somewhat. Mm-hmm. Um. It relies on you owning the game via right. Steam or what, or through their storefront, <clears throat> and uh, you can add their game to to their launcher. You have you, can, you have two tiers. One's a free tier where you can play for an hour at a time. Okay. Or if you buy their founder um, pack right now, whatever, uh, you can pay play for six hours at a time. Okay. And uh, basically, when you add a game, it launches you into like a remote desktop sort of thing, and yeah. then it brings up the Steam launcher. Mm-hmm. You download the game that instantly and then so yeah i know it's, it's so, so, so weird. you spend an hour playing the game just to get it downloaded and up to speed well, no actually so it's ex- i like, can see you I click download on on that store page and it downloads like instantly. so i guess it's already preloaded or whatever it's mm-hmm. weird um but once you get in there so i, I tried out bioshock infinite mm-hmm. and that shit was super super fast mm-hmm. like okay. i even like gave it like the quick mouse like you know, move around and it didn't skip a beat. No, like, I was, I was, I so are the benefits to this like if you don't have a computer that's up to snuff for gaming, uh, use this service? Yeah. yeah. So to, mm-hmm. okay. So supposedly they're running. But it's thirty five. On... Like some of these are like thirty five dollars a month. Mm-hmm. So you it's buy it for a year, you way, could get a computer. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you... unless like so like a computer, you'd have to pay all that money up front. But it right. may be yeah. easier for someone to pay thirty five dollars a month. Right. versus having all of it also up it's just nice to have the game like immediately yeah so like if you uh buy a computer you have to you may have to wait for the computer to arrive mm-hmm. and then you have to fucking if like, you know how to install build it, how to do yeah. everything or right. even if you get a pre-built machine you have to like install the game figure it out mm-hmm. and yeah. even and even with consoles you have to buy the hardware you okay. have to buy the thing this is a way around that it's kind of like uh how mobile gaming was just so instant on mm-hmm. a device okay. that you already have all right. yeah i see then so the idea is that you could play uh, whatever bullshit you want to play it's a on your phone. for video games. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And that's that's kind of like one of the one of the directions that a lot of this stuff's going in. But it's kind of wild. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's wild. That's kind of cool though. Yeah. So so uh, Phil Spencer, who is the head of Microsoft right now, um, wasn't he just the head of Google Stadia? Uh, no, you're thinking Phil Harrison. Okay. Yeah. Too many Phils. Yeah. Too many Phils. <laughs> too little time. Um, but he <clears throat> made a statement that uh, he doesn't consider Sony and Nintendo their competitors going forward. They're considering right. Am- Amazon. Amazon and Google, uh, Google yeah. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. So it kind of, you know, they clearly see the future is going mm-hmm. towards cloud. I think the future will be cloud. That being <clears throat> said, I'm an old fool geek. 
I, you know, I, I'm going, I, I like uh, collecting physical items. I like and collecting. And we yeah. literally mm-hmm. work for a company and our slogan is forever physical. Like our <laughs> yeah. whole job revolves around taking games that are digital only so ha- and making opinions. them, <laughs> and making them physical. Yeah. Our livelihoods preserve, have opinions. Yeah. Here. To yeah. preserve uh, those games that you could potentially lose. In the, in well, the cloud or and, the internet or whatever. You and know? that's that's one of the things about <clears throat> like this potential future that we're moving towards is, um, one, now you have to worry about rights. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, theoretically, uh, because I do a lot of PC gaming, I purchase and download a lot through Steam. Mm-hmm. But now all of the different companies are fracturing and they're yep. building their own launchers. Mm-hmm. and Just like how Netflix has a million streaming people. Uh, Stream people going against them now. Yeah, yeah. And so, in order to get all the shows you want, you got to get all. These it's turning services. into right. another cable almost. Yeah, it's which almost. I worry about that with <clears throat> gaming. Yeah, which yeah. Always, honestly, it's kind of always been that way. There's always been like the four, three or four tiers of like where you you're gaming at, whether it's like console, handheld, like um or uh PC or whatever. Yeah, there's always been different formats for gaming. Hell, board games. <laughs> but yeah. at the same time, I understand the the allure of not having all of your games in physical form because you don't have fucking room for them. Well, that's how yeah. I feel, that's how I feel about music at this point. I don't, yeah, all of our music, music is, is completely digital, digital to me now. Well, yeah. except have, for all of our fucking vinyls. Well, which yeah, are but, a pain in the ass every time we move. Of <laughs> like maybe 150 pounds worth of but vinyls. I've, I mean, and but and, and I've had how much music I listen to though. Yeah. I've had occurrences where my uh, hard drive is shit the bed, and You've then I just don't have that everything. music anymore. Yeah. Um. So it's like I I think there is a duality between owning and having direct access to it mm-hmm. versus not having to worry about it, not having to move those big boxes mm-hmm. of discs or whatnot. Mm-hmm. We um, thought about going minimalist one time. We sold a lot of stuff mm-hmm. one time in that process. Yeah, I even thought about it, like, uh, most of, like, our stuff comes from books. Like, I have so many books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I tried same. reading, uh, like, on Kindles and stuff, but it's not the same. Yeah. And I just have a lot of trouble, like, looking at the screen. Um, yeah. It keeps, like, sometimes I'll read a book to kind of, like, settle down for the night and not look at a screen. Right. Uh, so looking at a screen, even with, like, all those <laughs> different modes you can do with the blue light and stuff, turn that off, it still isn't the same. Right. Yeah. It's something about... Physically holding a book and looking at tactile paper. experience, yeah, yeah. That I'm just like I can't get rid of my books. Like I have be, to keep them. I've been getting a lot more art books lately, mm-hmm. and like especially with those, like some pages are a lot more glossier. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's that you know the feel of the page is part of the art. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. display as well. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you. Like you know, I'm I, I hoard a lot of uh, physical media as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we we see with um like different you know developers or publishers that go under like Telltale recently like yeah some of their like they, they said for if you own minecraft you know you have to download these episodes because even if you own the have license to the game you won't be able to download them yeah yep. now right. they um they fixed that recently. they fixed that yeah they've been saved and whatnot, so uh you know not everyone wants but to have a bailout maybe. because like hey ducktales like right now that's off of all the digital platforms mm-hmm. yeah. uh, you can't download the most it famous one the one it. that we deal with at work the most is scott pilgrim versus the world mm-hmm uh, and that is a game that has five legal p- properties that are, de- are right. we're dealing with at the moment. And it was only available on Xbox 360 and PS3 mm-hmm. as a downloadable game. And you can't even download it anymore. Right. Yeah. So, so like, every single day we have people ask us if we're going to do that game. Oh, my God. Like, literally, the bio in our Twitter is, like, zero days since someone's asked about Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an amazing game, but... Um, yeah, it's just, like, we're but, probably never going to get that game because well, it's just, like... Five, like you said, five people own well, it. It's really hard to get ownership or the, the legal. The legal it's, aspect of it is insane. Yeah. And one of them is Ubisoft, <clears throat> who's huge. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and my understanding, so like there's, part of me wonders if all of this streaming cloud-based bullshit comes out of like one lawyer who's like, yes, let's make mm-hmm. intellectual property laws mm-hmm. much more complicated so yeah. that no one can fucking do anything ever. Mm. Yeah. Because um, yeah. in the <clears throat> end, like a lot of these moves are made with money behind them. You yeah. know, like the ultimate goal is people want to make. Well, and, and the ultimate goal that that they're saying is like, oh, we just want to build a platform that people can use and be excited about and develop a relationship mm-hmm. with. And um I guess we're moving into a world where 
hardware, like physical boxes, don't have that. Yeah. You know, that worries well, me a bit, but I get it. I'm waiting for us to all just get the ports installed in the back of our necks. Like and then we can just jack in with whatever experience we want. Yeah. Uh, we won't have to like do anything anymore. Like if you want to go on a trip, Google it. <laughs> Man, so we actually we were at a uh, museum. We were at an art museum. We were seeing at MC an... Escher exhibit. Yeah. Right? yeah. And we were like looking at this really amazing like drawing or and they, illustration. Well, they have like a paragraph on the wall. It's like about you know the artist. Mm-hmm. And then people, it was very crowded because it was the last weekend that they were showing it at the museum. And everyone was like huddled around reading this giant paragraph, but it was like stopping traffic. Like t- people yeah. had to kind of like meander through. And this person behind us got really pissed because people were stopping and reading this paragraph. And they were like, oh, why is everyone stopping? You can just Google it. And so me and Brittany wow. and we were like, of that person. why bother going <laughs> so out much. anywhere and doing yeah. or seeing anything? Because you can just Google it. <laughs> We're like, I'm sorry that you're pissed that people paid money for this ticket to see this amazing art in person, and they're yeah. reading about the descriptions of the things. I legitimately and wonder upset about it. what search <laughs> that person thinks is going to return that paragraph. I, yeah. I don't know because it's something that the museum made. Like, yeah, they've curated the, that. Yeah, it's part of the exibit. Like, and you're not going to get and that. And there was experiences else. there that you couldn't get. Yeah, right. And there's so. a big difference between seeing a piece of artwork and a book or in a, on the computer versus real life like there's a big difference oh in that. Uh, yeah i mean we went that's those are some good pixels <laughs> yeah we went to the same uh not the same exhibit but to the same museum recently to go see the frida Kahlo and diego mm. mexican Riviera. art uh, yeah. exhibit that they had and um one of the things that really surprised me about that was that not only did they have all the art and whatnot but they actually had like clothing that she would have huh. wore at the time yeah. they Interesting. were they were explaining the culture surrounding her art yeah. along with yeah the like the itself. reasoning why she they made were the art, creating you know? an experience yeah. that people could yeah and it was awesome <laughs> engage with and <laughs> draw a closer connection but one to. of our inside jokes is like every time we see something amazing we're like oh just google it you know like <laughs> there's no reason to go experience just it when you can google it google sunrise <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that being said uh, along those lines, kind of like the PlayStation 9 trailer where all the like nanobots flew yeah. this person's brain and they experienced shit. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the, um, when I first got the HTC Vive, um, like years ago, mm-hmm. um, one of the things they let me do is they had, um, they had 3D scoped out like this area on Mars that you could walk around in. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, wait a minute. Did I just Google myself to Mars? Yeah. Did I? Because it was like very recently after that conversation we had, I was like, wait a minute. Maybe that person's right. No. I remember (laughs) being a kid though, and like when Google Maps first came out and you could do the satellite view and it would put you on like street view and you would go to like the pyramids or whatever and like look around and that was really awesome. I still do that. But I can't imagine that replacing a real experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and part of. The thing that I've been thinking about, because I also have an HTC Vive, and they're not taking off. No. Like, and so part of the what- The is doing pretty good, though, but that's a whole yeah. other conversation. Part of what led to computers getting adopted and gaming becoming a thing was uh, computers becoming cheap enough that office workers could mm-hmm. shift over to them, and became they became functional enough. So yeah. most of the people that I- know that are nerds have the story of like playing uh age of empires on their parents computer yep. or uh sim city or something um so i think part of that is like that leap needs to happen for vr needs which to happen is for and what still also needs to happen for like our main subject here like streaming games yeah i don't think we're there yet yeah um, um... We're, we're not at a place where it's cheap enough and reasonable enough for people to adopt it um, and uh, also infrastructure is a huge issue. Too, yeah. like, infrastructure. Yeah. Well, I mean, there uh, bandwidth internet and... access is a real problem yeah. in America, and especially if you want rural communities to like enjoy this. Mm-hmm. Nobody gives a fuck about rural communities. Well, though. the people <laughs> making this stuff should, definitely though, doesn't. because that makes up like most of the country. That's the Walmart yeah. money, man. Yeah. Exactly, mm-hmm. and that's that was one of the things that I was thinking about along with this is when the Xbox one came out mm-hmm. and it was using the online digital, only online only digital drm all that stuff and then uh all of a sudden everyone at xbox remembered 
oh shit, active duty service people mm -hmm. are some of our largest market. They have a lot of disposable income and they might not be in a place that has internet. So I've always denied this, but that was when the Xbox one got announced. That was my first taste of like coastal elitism being real. Yeah. Um, and like the two coasts, uh, really do not give a shit about anyone in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> well, it's easy to forget about right. people out there. It's yeah. easy for me to forget about people like living in the city. We live in the capital of the state and like, it's easy to forget about like places where we grew up Yeah, yeah. where mm. it's like, eh, you're in the woods. Like I had dial up in 2009. <laughs> yeah i remember that i was yeah. astounded when i found yeah that out and that. that's just the way it was and no one really batted an eye about it it was like inconvenient but we also were like whatever yeah. you know we did other things which is crazy i've seen how they have fiber though they probably did my family was probably like we're not paying for that <laughs> yeah. Use the oh, yeah. dial up. <laughs> and if someone needs to make a phone call you no, need to get off <laughs> i imagine that necessary infrastructure had that but like it didn't trickle down to yeah Britney's family. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, it's a recent thing. It is a pretty recent yeah. thing. Yeah. They, yeah. they have not, broadband not back now. Yeah, yeah. We, they, my family has the They have basic now. ass broadband, but. Uh, and they pay out the ass for it, too. Yeah. yeah. It's very basic. But, yeah, um, it. you know, and that, I think that's the majority of the country. And for us who are in these areas, these little pockets, it's easy to just forget that most people live in the back, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Which is strange because now with, like, way phones are coming. Like, that's becoming the fastest access point for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if, like, the, 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 the idea of, like, uh, Streamlink or, like, Google Stadia going through their phone, that's yeah. a smart move. Yeah. Well, and I, I think that, like, the Steam Link, mm -hmm. that's, that's the one that I, I think is the most interesting. And, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it has, <coughs> like, an associated heavy charge. No, and then Google Stadia, actually, if you want to, they have proprietary, like, controllers, um, controllers yeah. that work with it, too. So then they even now work with iPhones as well, not just Android. Yeah. So it's a start. I think it's, <coughs> I think we should still keep attempting. Yeah. I don't think it's going to ever supersede in our lifetimes, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, physical hardware. Right. But I do think eventually we'll get to that point. I don't know. I think we're going to get very close to it. If not completely like like we were worried about we, we thought that it might actually happen next generation. Uh -huh. But people voted with you know their dollars that they really wanted this space. Like I do think oh, I do think physical media is going to exist in one format or another, whether it's disc, whether it's like cartridge, whether it's SD card, whatever, what have you. But I don't know if um we'll ever be OK with not, not owning things. Now we've gotten that you way about music though, you, so I could be completely wrong. When you wrong. put this episode out, you should make a little straw poll, and I want—I'm curious about our viewers. Like, how yeah. many of you own? Like, how many of you have switched over to digital only, and how many of you still own yeah. like a lot of physical we media? You like have a, like a preference. You put like a fully digital, partial, <clears throat> physical. Yeah, only. or how many of you just maybe cut down on some of your collection and yeah. kept like, you know, only yeah. your favorites as physical? We'll put this out there because I tried to go. I'm just curious. Full digital. Um, a while back, mm -hmm. and I feel weird about it. Yeah. Like now, I'm sliding back towards owning things. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, even if it's in a digitized format that I have a backup of. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it depends. For me, like, uh, I'm really, really uh, old school when it comes to gaming. I prefer like the early '90s consoles still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me. Physical is not a problem because they're they're but like it was all physical. At right. the same time, you own pretty much you own like EverDrives for almost all of your retro. That being said, too. yes, I do also make digital <laughs> uh, uh, copies of everything. Yeah, but uh, most of those games, the games that I want, the games that um, I want to have physically, I do have. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> but yeah, that's just one of those things. That's just one of those things. And I think, honestly, yeah, we'll do the poll, and maybe we'll come back to this subject at another time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. bye.